the thing that Alexander discovered that was that was so interesting and so unique to be able to figure out on your own. I mean, you know, it's just phenomenal, really. You know, he was, I don't know if you know anything about who he was, F.M. Alexander, but he was a, what you would call an elocutionist. He recited Shakespearean monologues. Mm. And what was happening was he was losing his voice in, in performance. And so he went to doctors of the day and they would tell him to not speak to drink tea and honey, et cetera, and he would dutifully follow instructions. And what would happen is then when he would uh, have his next performance, he would lose his voice again. And so finally he went to one of the doctors and said, you know, is it possible that it could be something that I'm doing that, that's causing the trouble? And the, the doctor disagreed with him. Well, that actually spurred him to... Uh, research that further. So he went through this long period of self-examination using um, mirrors and watching his physical movements when he went to speak. And initially, of course, as he did that, he, he had difficulty seeing anything at all out of the ordinary. But over time, he began to see that he was pulling his head back and then the whole issue unwound. And he noticed that he was doing actually a variety of things that weren't initially uh, appearing to him. So mm. he, it, it, the point is that he, it was something that he was doing. It had nothing to do with the fact that he was speaking, you know, um, that he was reciting. In other words, these Shakespearean monologues had nothing to do with Shakespeare. It, had not, it was just that over time, along with learning that material, he had picked up other things. And that tends to be what happens to us with the trumpet. 